for the exchange. Netflix is set to report after the bell on Thursday. Shares are up more than 27% year to date. And my next guest is sticking with the bullish trend, boosting his price target by 100 bucks to 700 bucks a share. And he sees a lot more room to run. Joining me now is Ben Swinburne. He's head of U.S. media research at Morgan Stanley. Ben, what about Netflix has it performing so much better than its media peers who are still struggling right now? Well, thanks for having me, John. Um, look, when we look at Netflix, clearly it's won the streaming battle. And what that means financially is a business with really impressive growth, returns, and cash flow generation. And when you compare it to its media competitors today, you know, that's a very different profile that we're seeing across much of the industry. Um, so as we look ahead, we see 25 to 30 percent earnings growth ahead uh, for Netflix, 20 percent plus return on capital. Those are the kind of characteristics that can generate a lot of value for equity holders. What if Netflix were to say, uh, b because sometimes companies in this position do, OK, we're going to start spending more to press our advantage in this situation, kind of like a version of what Tesla did when it lowered prices, you know, just investing in the future. Are, are investors prepared for that? Are you prepared for that? Or do you think that's unlikely given the position that Netflix has right now? Well, look, I think part of why we're still bullish is actually we expect them to continue to invest in the business. Um, they could certainly go into more of a harvest mode if they chose. But they've done a really nice job over many years, John, of balancing top line growth uh, with reinvestment back in the business to sort of pad their lead and drive margins. And that's a balancing act. But as we look out over a three to five year view, I think if you're owning the stock here or recommending the stock here as we are, you're actually betting that they are going to have success in things like advertising, uh, in Netflix games, in continuing to build out their international programming. All of those things uh, require capital. But the key is they can grow revenues faster than the CapEx they spend on their business. And that really is what drives the leverage in the business, which we find so attractive. So you expect this could easily hit, well, I shouldn't say easily, it could hit $1,000 a share in two and a half years. Which one of those factors, whether it's advertising, expansion in gaming, maybe even doing more in sports, do you think is most important to getting there? Mm, that's a good question. I think they're all important. That's why we wrote about them in our report. Um, yeah, that is our bull case. I mean, to generate 25 million plus or minus net ads a year, consistently drive mid-single digit type uh, revenue per user growth, um, I think they're going to have element, need to have elements of success in all of those areas. We think sports is really interesting. We think it's a TAM expander for the company. Uh, we think that advertising is a way to actually drive revenue while keeping consumer prices a little bit lower, all else equal. Um, so, And then games, really, I mean, they're only two years in. It's still pretty early. If you look at the Americans, anyway, who spend time and money on uh, video games, they tend to spend about four times more than what your average television viewer does on TV. So if they can penetrate that video game sub base within the Netflix platform, there's a lot of opportunity there. Finally, how linked is Netflix's, at least stock fortune, to consumer spending? I know probably you would say, people would say, well, if people are giving up streaming services, they'll give up Netflix last. But if we start to see yeah. that showing up, how much of an impact is that going to have on the stock? Yeah, generally, over you know the many years that we've been following the media space, what we've seen is that that video entertainment services are pretty sticky in a softer economy, uh, but they're not immune by any stretch. This is where the advertising supported tier is helpful, John, for Netflix, because for those consumers that are more price sensitive, at least in twelve you know big markets around the world, Netflix has a cheaper option for them. So that should help mitigate some of that pressure if we see it in the consumer. Makes sense, Ben Swinburne. Thank you.